All right. You're all online. You're famous now. Hey, what up? What? Follow me on Twitter. Okay, great. Listen. You're going to be asked to find the area between two curves. Cool. We have found area before. What tool do we use to find area? In a, thank you so much. Integrals, yeah. We integrate a function, but that finds the area between the function and the x-axis. Okay. So, for instance, if I said, hey, find the area between y equals root x and the x-axis on the interval 0 to 4. Nope. Let's do 0 to 1. Okay. That would just be the integral from 0 to 1 root x dx. I'm not going to do the integral right now, but I hope everybody can do that integral. Any questions on that? We feel comfortable with that. Okay, that's something we've been doing. And we said if they ask specifically for area and the graphs below the x-axis, you've got to turn it positive. Okay, but let's not worry about that right yet. So the questions that you're going to see, very similar, except they might say find the area between root x and x squared, okay? When they give you two functions and they ask you to find the area between them, either they're going to tell you from like x, remember on the last one I said x equals 0 to x equals 1? They'll either tell you the boundaries or they mean that root x and x squared make a defined shape, like it closes some area, okay? And they want you to find the area that it encloses, okay? So most of the time you're going to have a calculator for this, or they'll be kind of easy functions. Like these two should be easy functions, okay? We should know that the square root of x goes like this. I just drew that. And we should know that x squared goes like this. Can we all agree that they close off a section of the xy plane? There's a definite area that they enclose. It's right here. Is that Okay. So to find that area in there, I have to know what x values that, that we're going to use, which means that I need to know where they intersect. How do you find out where two curves intersect? Set them equal and solve it. Or if you have a calculator, you just graph them and find those points. Okay? If you don't have a calculator, you've got to set these things equal. So you would say, hey, root x has to be x squared. And you'd solve that by hand. Okay? Spoiler alert, it's 0 and 1. Okay? So that means that we want to find the area between them, between 0 and 1. And again, sometimes they're just going to give you the limits. They'll say, find the area between these functions from 0 to 1. Well, now, now you know you're going from 0 to 1. That's easy. Okay? But if they don't, then you've got to find out where they intersect. Okay? So the way we find area between curves is we're going to use an integral. But let's go back to geometry for a second. Remember geometry class? Maybe even like middle school. I don't know. Or you had like a, they'll say, hey, find the area of this square, except, oh no, there's a hole in the square. Okay, so if they said find the area of this region here, it looks like Swiss cheese. You would find the area of the whole square and subtract off the area of the circle. Does that make sense? That's how you find the area that was there. We're going to use that same exact <laughs> idea to find the area between these two curves. Okay, I'm going to first. Find the area under the bigger function, the greater function. Which one's the greater function on the interval? X squared. Root x. Because it's on top. That's so, yeah. We want the function graphically, we want the function that's on top. Okay? That's the bigger function for us. Okay? We're going to subtract off the area that's under the, uh, the, the lower function. So let's think about this. Ready? If I find the area under x squared from 0 to 1, that's this area. And if I find the area under x squared from 0 to 1, that's this area. If I subtract this area from over here, I get the area I'm looking for. That makes sense? So that's all we're going to do. So really, we're just doing two areas and subtracting them. Okay? And it looks like this. The area under root x looks like that. And the area under x squared looks like that. Okay? Now, usually you don't do two separate integrals because both these integrals are going from 0 to 1. Okay? So they usually just write this as one integral. Integral 0 to 1 
of root x minus x squared dx. Okay? And if we had a calculator, we'd do it in a calculator. But this is one that we could do by hand if we had to. Right, Ben? Right. Okay. Everybody feel comfortable with this so far? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so just in general, to find the area between two curves, all you're ever going to do is integrate from left to right. What's up, Miss Flick? Man, these kids work every day. I was like, hey, let's take a day off. And they said, no, we need to work. Oh, that's easy. Mr. Flick can do this all day. He probably does this. Does this in bed when he's falling asleep. He's just thinking about curves. He's making them up. The Flick curve. So let's see here. Hold on. If we had to find the area between the Flick curve and the Smith curve, it'd be the Smith minus the Flick. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. That could be a trivia. Let's not say that anymore. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> okay. Woo! Well, let's, no, we're, we're, we're going to breeze through some other things here. Mr. Flick, I'm recording this, man. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that coming. Okay. All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sometimes... Sometimes they define they define functions instead of y equals you're going to see them as x equals. Okay, this is much less likely, much less likely, but sometimes you'll, you'll see stuff like this. Okay, they'll say, hey, find the area between those two curves. Well, well, you got to find. Well, hold on, hold on. When we're in terms of y, now our functions are in terms of y. So graphing them looks a little bit uh, weird. If you wanted to graph these, you could solve for y. Okay? But y squared is just a parabola opening sideways. Okay? Like if x equals y squared, then y really equals <laughs> plus or minus root x. Cool? So that's the positive square root of x, which is this. And it's the negative square root of x, which is this. Easy enough. And if x equals 2y plus 2, then y equals, you would subtract 2 and then divide by 2. So it equals 1 half x minus 1. And that would look like this a little bit, to the best of my graphing ability. Okay with that? So, those two graphs definitely close an area, right? We want to find the area of that shape. Now the problem is this. If we try to do top minus bottom, people are going to have questions later on, and I know why. That's right. Okay. If we try to do top minus the bottom here, the problem is this. Here, the top to the bottom is y squared to the line. Does that make sense? But when we get over here past this point, I know it's kind of hard to see, top minus bottom is y squared to y squared. Does that make sense? We could do it that way, but it's a little weird. It's more work. Okay. However, if we define our areas... Oh, what just happened? If we define our areas instead of top to bottom as right to left, then our rectangles look like this. Okay. So let me go up. I wanted to say this up here when we're doing this. When we find the area but between curves, like, like we just did, we, we did root x and we did x squared, what we're really doing there is we're saying, hey, there's infinitely many little tiny rectangles between these two curves. You guys see this? And if I can find the area of every single one of these rectangles and add them up, then that's going to be the area that's between those two curves. Okay? Well, the area of a rectangle we know is length times width or base times height, whatever. Cool. What's the width of those rectangles if I'm making them infinitely small? What do we call that? Not tiny. What do we call an infinitely small change in the horizontal direction? Oh, my goodness. Come on now. It's dx. That's just dx. That's called dx. That means an infinitely small change in x. That's the width of these rectangles. Cool. But the height or the length is this distance here. Well, look, what if I told you this top function was just 10 and the bottom function was 3? How tall, are, how tall is that rectangle? 7. We just subtracted them, true? But 
The problem is the heights are changing. If I chose a rectangle over here, that's a very small rectangle, right? If I chose a rectangle in the middle, they're bigger rectangles. So you can't just say the height is a constant number. You got to have the height as a function. And the height is always just the distance between those curves, which is why we subtracted them, okay? So the height of this is really root x minus x squared. And again, we're doing top minus bottom because if I said like the top is 10, the bottom is 3, you don't do 3 minus 10, you do 10 minus 3. It's always big minus small, okay? So that right there is the area of one rectangle, okay? I want to add up all the rectangles from 0 to 1. Well, the operation that does that is the integral. The integral adds them all up, okay? So we're adding up a bunch of rectangles. That's what we're doing. So keep, keep that like, idea in mind because when we start to do it horizontally like this, okay, now my rectangles are running left to right. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. We can still add up all those rectangles, okay? There's still a bunch of rectangles in here. But now I'm not crushing down the horizontal distance. I'm crushing down the vertical distance. Cool? What's the height of every single one of these rectangles going to be? If I crush it down, infinitely small, what? Not dx, dy. I'm crushing it down to dy. Okay? Which means I'm going to integrate with respect to y. y is my variable now. Okay? We're good? So now I also need to find the width, like how, how wide these rectangles are. So we'll do the same thing. If I told you this side over here was 8, and this side over here was 2, how wide is that rectangle? Six. 6. We just did the right side minus the left side. Easy enough? What curve, though, so it, they're changing, though, so we need, we need a formula for, for this width. What curve is on the right-hand side? Here's our curves. Which one's on the right? Okay. We can say 1 half x minus 1, but we really want to be in terms of y, so we're going to use this one. 2y plus 2, which someone back here said. Okay, we need 2y plus 2 because I'm integrating with dy. So I need y's to be in my integral, not x's. At no point should you ever have a dy and have x in your integral. Okay, the same thing is true of dx. If you have dx at the end, you need all x's in there. Okay, so this is going to be the right side is just 2y plus 2. We're subtracting off the left side, that's y squared, and we're multiplying that by dy. That's the area of one rectangle. I want to add them all up, so I'm going to integrate. Now, what's weird, not weird, what you've got to pay attention to, because y is our variable, we're not going to integrate from the leftmost point to the rightmost point. Those numbers don't matter. Our integral depends on y. We have to let our rectangles run from the bottom point to the top point. That make sense? So we got to find out where these two curves intersect still. But now I want the y values that are there. Okay? So we could find them by setting y squared equal to 2y plus 2. Okay? That's going to be a quadratic formula kind of thing, and I don't want to do that. And in a calculator, you got to keep your bearings about you here. If you want to know where those two things are equal, right, that's the same exact thing as saying this. I need y squared minus 2y minus 2 to be 0. Same exact equation. In a calculator, you can solve any equation you want by graphing it, but when we graph it, every single one of those y's is going to have to be an x. But keep in mind, when you put it in your calculator, y is going to be x really in this case, which is kind of confusing. That's just the way the calculator is because we can't graph uh, functions, not mean functions, uh, graphs that, that depend on y in our calculator. But the way, the way you're going to find these intersections is we're going to solve, what was it? It was y squared minus 2y, no, 2y, come on now, uh, minus 2, right? I need to know where that equals 0. That's where those things intersect. Those are the y values. So all I'm going to do is graph it. Um, I, I don't think they're going to be very big, so I'm going to set my window to go from, I know 1's negative, so I'm going to go from negative 2, which don't even have to go to negative 2, but it doesn't matter, to, I don't know, like 8. And all I need to see is the zeros, so I'm going to go from negative 1 to 1 on my y window, just so I can see where it hits the axis. And I'm going to graph it. There's 1, there's 2. Okay? And once I find them, we want the zero. So it looks like 1 is between 1 
n zero. Oh, not oh, one and I don't know six. We'll say. Enter, enter. We get two point seven three. So I'm going to store that as a value. Okay, because I'm going to have I'm going to have to use that whole number there. I, I can't round it. So I'm going to quit out of here, and I'm going to store that as b because that was my second x value or y value really. Then I'm going to go back into my graph, and I'm going to find my first one. So that's second, trace, we want the zero, and it looks like it's between negative one and zero. And I'm going to hit enter, it's going to find it, and I'm going to store that as A. Okay, so I'm going to quit out of here, I'm going to store that answer as A. And on my paper, I'm going to write B equals and A equals and write out those numbers. So now I can use A and B over and over again. Yeah. Those are really the y's because we just solved this equation. Yeah, your calculator is going to say x because you have to put it in as x's. So that's why I'm saying you got to keep your bearings about you about what you're actually solving. Okay, so as long as you remember you're solving this equation here, then your answer has to be y equals. But the calculator will always be x equals. It doesn't matter what the variable is on the paper. Okay, so I'm going to call a the first number and b the second number. I don't think anybody wrote these down with me. So negative 7. 0.73205. Uh, what? 08076. Yup. And I'm going to write B is 2.732. So the same decimal, right? I'm just going to write that down, and the area in there is the integral from A to B. Okay, because A is really this number down here, and B is really this number up here. That's what we just found. Cool. Well, it's, it's, we just found where they intersected, because we set them equal to each other. That's all area between a curve. You can either use Y or X. Okay, it really is going to depend on how they give you the functions most of the time. Um, most of the time, guys, it's going to be X. Like, only occasionally will you ever see on an AP exam where you got to use Ys. Okay? But the, base, the basic thing is, all you're doing is adding up a bunch of rectangles. They always have a thickness of either DY or DX. And the, the other dimension is always a function minus another function. Big, big minus small. Okay? So, to finish up our rule here, it's either the top minus the bottom, or it's the... If, if it's in terms of y, I'll say c to d, it's the right minus the left. Okay? So you might want to put that down somewhere. So in the AP exam, the way you see this is, now there's more that we've talked about. This is just area. We're going to talk about volume today too. Okay? What's wrong, Josh? You can't read my handwriting? Yeah. What? You got it? Yeah. That's his left. Cool. Um, so that's everything with areas. And again, just to show you a couple questions that they can ask you here. What? I'll go back in a second. Hold on. Cool. Check this out. Here's an example where they gave you a graph. They gave you another graph. So there's y equals negative 2, and there's that graph. They call r this region. And the very first question is usually, well, not in this question. But usually they ask you to find the area of that region. Okay? They did not do that in this one. They asked you to find uh, volume first. Cool. But if you go up here. This is 2013 question five, which means you don't have a calculator for this, okay? And they said, find the area of that. Well, the area of this is gonna be, again, the top function minus the bottom function, but look what they did to you without a calculator. They give you a trig function, okay? I know, right? So you, you gotta know your trig. If you don't know trig at this point, the best you can do is set up the integral and just try to reason out what's going on, okay? Because um, usually the answer the answer for that is worth like two or three points, and you get points for your integral, and you get points for the actual answer. Okay. Oh well, one's a parabola, and one for cosine. You're supposed to know cosine starts up here. Cosine usually starts at one, but because you're multiplying it by four, it's at four now. Cool. Okay. I'm um, gonna go back another year. Here's one where they give you again two functions ln of x and 5 minus x, this is this is a calculator question, and they ask you to find the area of r. Okay, check this out. Starting out on the left, look what my rectangles would look like. They look like that, right? What's the top of that rectangle? Wait, what are the sizes? 
Well, you, you could go sideways if you want, but because they've defined my functions in terms of x's, let's just think about this vertically. The height of that first rectangle there is just ln of x. Cool? And then the bottom is just 0. But once I get past this x value, now the rectangles are 5 minus x to 0. Cool? If the top changes, you have to do a different, you have to start a new integral. Okay? So this area requires you to do two, two integrals. One's going to be ln of x from 0 to whatever this point here is, and the other is going to be k to 5 of 5 minus x. Okay? So because our integrals are defined as top minus bottom if we're doing dx, if one of those changes, you need a new integral. Okay? And we will practice this more. Right now, guys, we're just going through all the notes. Okay? I know, I know we're not doing a ton of practice here. Um, but that, that's basically all, all you need to know about area here. Okay? And again, I'm just showing you examples. Um, here's another one. There's two functions. Question B, find the area of R. Here's one. Two functions. A, find the area of R. Okay? So you're probably going to get a question like that. Like in 2014, they didn't ask you to find the area, but they're probably like, there'll be multiple choice questions where they ask you to find the area. Okay, but let's go back to where we were. All right, so that's one big new thing for us, area between two curves. Okay, I know, yeah, Albert. Yeah, so if the two shapes create like a geometric figure that you know, yeah, you can use a formula. That's probably not going to happen. Okay, all right. Then we do volume. You ready for this? We do volume two different ways. Well, they're going to ask you to find a volume of two different kinds of shapes, okay? The first is rotations. All right. And in, in this uh, free response question that we just looked at, there's a bunch of finding areas. There's also going to be find volumes. They're all going to be in the same exact free response question. Like part A will be find the area. Part B or C will be find the volume. Okay? So, but to create a volume, what we're going to do is, well, I'll just show you here. Let's, let's, let's take a, it'll look like this. It'll say find the volume when the region between, I know my handwriting is kind of bad here. I'm sorry. When the region between root x, I'm going to use the same functions, and x squared is rotated about the x-axis. Okay? So if this isn't the same exact uh, region, like the one we just, this is the same region we just did. But if it wasn't, we'd have to find the intersections. We'd have to find the bounds on this thing. Okay? And we would do, again, we do that graphically. But for right now, let's think about what this looks like. Okay? We're going to rotate that shape, which seems weird, around the x-axis. Okay? Can you imagine what that would look like? So let me see here. Where might you see something like this? Do you remember those... Um, like, like, yeah, very much like a fan, how a fan crushes on itself and then it opens up like that. Or also you see like uh, decorations, like my mom always had these like, uh, like on St. Patrick's Day or something, she has these green bell looking things that they fold flat, but when you unroll them, they roll like that and it, it makes like a decoration, okay? So it's kind of like one shape that rotates around itself and makes like a three-dimensional circular figure, okay? But what, it, what it's going to look like really here, let's think about this, is we're going to take every single one of these points in this plane and rotate it out of the board and around like that. Does that make sense? If I was just doing root x, it would make like a big bell looking thing. Okay? But since I'm also rotating the x squared, the outside looks like a big bell, but the inside is going to be kind of like a weird kind of cone thing that's that not there. That make sense? Okay? I'm going to look at one at a time and we'll Okay? It's not a flexion here. You know what? Let's let's uh let's let's go to my friend Wolfram Alpha. Okay, oh, I forgot I was looking at this Kindle thing. No, I'm not getting a Kindle. I don't, know. That was, I don't know why that was on there. I was like, okay, you ready? Let's do volume rotation. Great. Tunnel? No, no, no. What is this crap? Shells? Oh, we want disk method. 
Do we have a disk method? Here we go. Oh, here's a better one. I like this. Okay. Ready for this craziness? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of small. Can I? Okay, so look. Do you see? Do you, do you see this black curve there? Yeah. That's f of x. That's just some function in the xy plane. Okay. But what we've done is we've taken that curve and rotated it all the way around the x-axis. And all it does is make a big old circle. Okay. If you were to take it and rotate it around, it'll make a big circle, right? The further f of x is from the the x-axis, the bigger the circle is going to be. So the biggest circles happen here where, where this is maximized, okay? And the small circles happen here. But either way, it just creates this big volume, okay? Um, and this all, all this is is, look, if, if you move the circle, you can see that the circle is getting bigger and then smaller than bigger. Easy enough? That's, that's what, what we're talking about here. Now, with area, what we did was we took a bunch of infinitely small rectangles and added them together to make a shape, and that was the area of our shape. But to find a volume, we don't want to add together rectangles. We want to add together all these circles that are there. You see, like so. For instance, let's just stop in the middle there for a second. Pretend that that shape there is made up of a bunch of really thin circular cards. Okay. If you had a bunch of real thin circular cards, and you can see one right here, cool. And I put them all together, I could make that shape. True. If I find the volume of every single one of those cards and add them together then that's the volume of the whole shape, okay? So that's what we're going to do the same thing we do with rectangles, but now we're not adding rectangles together. We're going to add these cards together, okay? Um, another example that I'm seeing here is this. Nope, not that one. Okay, here's another fairly good one. So this one doesn't put the axis on here, which is kind of annoying, but I can't even get this function. All right. You see how that black curve there is root x? It's kind of hard to see. There you go. You see this curve, gentlemen? This is a great time to pass around cookies. I know. I... Do you see how this curve here is the square root of x? There should be an axis here. There should be a y-axis right here and an x-axis right here. Cool? All they're doing is taking root x and rotating it around. Now, this is kind of like a, a Riemann sum approximation. Instead of doing infinitely many disks, they're doing two disks. Okay? But it's just making big cylinders. The more disks I put in there, where do I have this? Number of segments. The more disks I put in, check it out, the more it looks like that 3D shape that it's supposed to look like. It kind of looks like the tip of a bullet or something. Okay? A cone, whatever you want to say. Does that make sense? Okay? Like, so that's all we're doing. And if I find the volume of every single one of those disks and add them up, I get the volume of the entire shape. Okay? That's what we're doing back here on my OneNote page. Except mine's going to have a hole in the center. I'm starting with like a little bit more difficult one. Okay? But the idea is, so th that one I just showed you had one full solid thing. Okay? We're going to do the same thing we do with area. We're going to find the volume of the big one and subtract off the volume of the small one. Okay, so for right now, let's just focus on the volume of the big one, which is root x. Okay. Oh, I like hearing that. There's root x. We're going to rotate this around. This is going to be my outer piece. Cool. Now, I'm telling you, this thing is made up of a bunch of, think about this, infinitely thin cards that are circles like that. They've got like a very, 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 very thin thin thickness. How thin? Infinitely thin. That's correct. Okay. Now I want to find the volume of that one card. Cool. What shape is that really? Although it's really crushed down. It's not a circle. It's got a thickness. So it's, what's a circle with a thickness? It's a cylinder. Okay. That's a cylinder. That's a cylindrical card. We'll say. Okay. Do you guys remember the volume of a cylinder? It's the area of the top times the height. So the area of a cylinder, or the volume of a cylinder, is pi r squared h. Okay? That's the volume of any old cylinder. Let's look at this cylinder that we're talking about in this question. This cylinder has a radius right there. What is that radius going to be? It's the distance from the x-axis to this curve. What is that? 
it's, it's, it's changing for every single card, but it's always defined by what? Not, no, f of x. It's the y value. Yeah, it's the y value on that function. So the radius in this case is just f of x. Does that make sense? So we're going to square it. So it's pi times f of x squared times the height. Now this thing's turned sideways, okay? This is blasphemous. I'm going to talk over the pledge. I'm sorry. But what's the height of these cylinders? Not x. We're crushing them down. dx. The height is actually the width because it's kind of turned sideways. Okay? Cylinders usually look like this. Right? Where that's the height. I'm turning it sideways. Think about that. And then I'm making it super duper small. Okay, okay, okay. So that's dx. Look. That's the volume of one cylinder. But I don't want the volume of one cylinder. I want the volume of all of them added together. So guess what I'm going to do? Integrated. Integrated from start to stop. I leave the pi out. Leave, just leave the pi out front. That right there is the volume of a solid of rotation. Okay. We're good. All it is is adding up together a bunch of disks. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue this tomorrow, and then we'll practice some. Oh, no, we have a little multiple choice quiz tomorrow. Never mind. We'll continue this Monday. I want you to finish that multiple choice for homework. Yeah, it's 25 multiple choice questions, yeah. No, it's more than 25. No, it's not.